happy Friday! Welcome back to the channel. My name is Aziza, aka Gourmet Pens. Today, I have a new pen. So I want to say it's not really a review because it's new. Uh, it's just a video about this pen. And I want to share it with you because it's my favorite model of pen. And I, I really, this one's just special. So I just wanted to share it with you right away. I have done a review of this model before. I can link to it. It's on my blog. So anyway, let's let's look at the pen. Let's talk about this pen. The pen is very special. It comes in this box, which I'm going to show you. It has a cantaloupe skin like texture. Open the box. I'm going to drop the box there. There is another box. My favorite, so many boxes. It is this. Oh, it's a Namiki. It is the Namiki 2022 Ginkgo. It comes with a bottle of Namiki Black. And here's the pen in the gold satin bed. I am going to just look at the paperwork here with you. Here is the Ginkgo paperwork information. It has a serial number and if you are buying this pen, it is not inexpensive. And so it has a little guide. I would read it, at least flip through it, just to have an idea of any maintenance or care you might need to give it. I will mention it briefly, but we could do that after. So first up we have um, Ginkgo Limited Edition. There are 300 that have been produced. Often cited as examples of trees that change color because their leaves turn to gold with the onset of autumn, ginkgo trees, together with the red leaves of maples and other varieties, add splashes of vivid color to the autumn season. As ginkgo trees are tremendously hardy and can survive for more than a thousand years, they are also considered to be auspicious symbols of longevity. In Japan, ginkgo trees have been planted in many locations, including Shinto shrines and Buddhist temples, as well as on roadsides. Do you really want, should I read all of this? I'm going to. As their bark is thick and contains a large volume of water, ginkgo trees are resistant to fire and will survive even the, even the most intense of con conflagrations. Therefore, planting them carries the wish that nearby buildings will likewise not be consumed by fire. As their leaves are fan-shaped, ginkgo trees carry the meaning of increasing prosperity as time passes. Used for kimono designs and family crests since time immemorial, they make magnificently elegant patterns. There are male and female trees, the seeds for which the tree is known for develop only on female trees and are used to signify trouble-free trouble childbirth and the perpetuation of descendants when attached in large numbers to bells. The pen has gold dust sprinkled all over it and has been finished using the togidashi burnished polishing technique. Ginkgo leaves are depicted on the cap and barrel using Hira flat makie techniques and kakiwari techniques have been used on the golden leaves to clearly render their veins. Wow. Okay, so one by one we've incorporated and depicted the wish that they will bring happiness to each and every person that holds one in his or her hand. Um, kakiwari is the lacquerware technique used to apply gold dust without lacquer to the parts that represent boundary lines as exemplified by the veins of leaves and the wings of birds. Even this description alone is just very beautiful. So I'm going to just put away the box. I actually don't mind this box. It is not ridiculously huge compared to the pen itself. So I'm, I, I'm good with that. Uh, I'm just going to adjust my, no, I look too, too light and too, there we go. I'm going to move this. I'm going to put this here and we're going to check out this beauty. So the Yukari is probably my favorite pen model and I have been eyeing this one for a long time. I purchased this at Pen Chalet and it is it was shipped super fast and very safely. I always enjoy purchasing from Pen Chalet so I'm just saying that it's a nice experience. Um, yeah, so let me go over the details of it. I know I just explained everything. The clip has Namiki engraved on it as well as the logo, a round ball at the end. It is a snug clip. 
I am very gentle with this pen. Um, I have another Yukari. I've had the Moonlight. I had to sell it. Um, I kept the Skyline, which I have here. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't need to show you. We're looking at the Ginkgo. Um, but I've been very, I'm very careful with the pens because it's, it's a valuable pen to me and it's, it's irreplaceable. So the, the Ginkgo leaves are just, they're so elegant and they have a bit of texture. The gold dust is smooth. The artist has signed uncapped the yukari so the inner of the cap here has like a, a smooth velvet so it's very gentle on the threads in hand this pen is utterly perfect i absolutely love the yukari it's so comfy and i'm not going to post it um it it does post it has that velvet to protect it it's incredible when posted, but I'm going to undo that. It does post. The, it is a, sorry, the filling system is a, in this particular case, a Con 70. So it's Pilot Proprietary. I love this pen. I, I have a, th I, I, I love Ginkgo. I love Ginkgo trees. I love their colors and the way they change. And I just love the apparent appearance of the leaves. So the pen, when it became available and I, I could manage to get one, was just a no-brainer for me. I'm going to show you the size of the pen. So it's not a huge pen. It's, it's on the slender side, but it has a, uh, a brass sleeve. So it's very solid in hand. Not heavy, but it just feels really good. It feels like a solid pen. So here we have the Yukari, um, an Estabrook Esti, an Opus 88 Colero, a Pilot Metropolitan, a Lamy Safari, Jinhao X750, Twisby 580, Platinum Preppy, and a Coveco Sport. So you can see a full-size pen, not super girthy. It's, I mean, it's really quite comparable to the Lamy Safari, but just nicer proportions, I would say. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's take a quick look at the nib. The nib we're going to look at the nib in more details from the side, but the nib is exquisite. I have a broad nib. It has the gold hallmark. It is two-tone, so it's a single slit, a uh, round breather hole, and it has the mountain top in rhodium, and the rest of it's yellow gold. Um, just looking if there's anything else on here that it's of note. Not really. So it's 18 karat, and... Um, it does have a plastic feed. Nothing wrong with a plastic feed. Just saying. And it's the number five size, so it's not a huge nib. But I'm very excited about this pen, and it's very special, so I'm very excited. And I just really wanted to share it with you. So let's do that. Let's do it now. We have the... Oh, man. The Namiki... Yukari, this is the Ginkgo limited, limited edition. So the retail price for this is, is 1700 US. I did use my own discount, discount code at Pen Chalet. <laughs> so you can do that too. It's 10% off with Gourmet 22. Um, the ink, well, first of all, look how it's, it's, it's perfect. Th these nibs are just incredible and it's really hard to describe the writing experience. It's just perfect. So the ink is, um, what is it called? I have it here. Um, she, her, bay, something. Shogun. It is a glitter ink. Yes, I put a glitter ink in here. Um, it's not super glittery, but because it's a converter, it's easy to clean. It's an easy pen to maintain. And truly, if I gunk up the converter with glitter, I will just get a new one. So it is a Japanese broad. Like, it's not a super broad, but it's 
truly perfect. And when I first was writing with it, I thought, oh, this nib needs tuning, but nope, it doesn't. And the reason I felt that is, I, this sounds really weird. I was writing on a weird surface at the wrong angle and it just didn't feel right. And now I'm like, since I've been using it more comfortably at my desk, it's just so right. <laughs> it just feels really good. It is, I really like the shape of the Namiki nibs, the Yukari nibs, they like with the shoulders. So it goes like this and then it comes to that. And then it has like the little tines at the end. That's a terrible drawing, but that's how I feel. Um, let's do this. It is a firm nib, even though it is 18 karat gold, there is, you know, sometimes there is the belief that um, gold nibs are soft and that is not always the case so in this case it is firm we can apply a bit of pressure and it gets to be a wet broad um, because of the way the tines are shaped the shoulders aren't really spreading it's actually the tines that are spreading so I would actually say be gentle with it don't apply pressure it's not meant to be used with pressure it writes with free weight. It's just performs so well. And I really like everything about this model is just right for me. It's truly my favorite model. And I, it's just so comfy. Even the threads, everything is smooth. It fits my hand really well. I'm very, very happy with it. So we have seven wide panting foot lines. I also feel really happy with it because it feels easy for me to write uniformly and consistently. Like my hand doesn't fatigue. It's not hard to control. Um, the nib is on the smaller side, like relative to like a pilot. 15 nib or something so I'm able to get closer to the page to control my shakiness in my hand when it's having that issue sometimes it's not as bad and sometimes it is worse it is literally just gliding across the page and the thing is it's not a buttery smooth like skating across the page experience it's just the perfect interaction of nib on paper so truly if you had to buy a pen and you had some money to splurge with and you're looking for a really nice pen there are several finishes of the yukari and i would absolutely recommend a yukari to anybody I just want to keep writing with it. So there is one type of alphabet. Here's another style I like to do. It's a very versatile nib. It is a round point. So you're really not getting variation unless you apply that pressure. But I think that's kind of what contributes to the beauty of it. Like the consistency of the appearance of your handwriting is just perfect with the round point. So anyway, I'm very excited. Um, as for care, I wipe it down with a very soft cloth, like a microfiber. Um, I store it. It's always stored. I don't put it in leather. I actually store it in like a rickshaw sleeve. So um, something tooting my own horn with my own design on my own rickshaw, uh, something like this that's plush and keep it out of sunlight, keep it out of intense heat. It requires a little more upkeep, but it's totally worth it. So, okay, let's do some side footage and then we will come back.
side footage was beautiful. At least I enjoyed it and I hope you did as well. And if you want to see the ink, hopefully you can see it, but you will have seen it from the side. Um, so again, I, I got this at Pen Chalet. I used my own pennies, a lot of them. Um, their shipping and service and packaging was fantastic. You can use Gourmet 2022, no, sorry, 22 for 10% off your purchase. There may be some exclusions, but they're usually pretty good in, in uh, honoring it. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little here because we're coming to the end. Thank you for watching. If you have not seen it, I have done a blog post on the Namiki Yukari. And I have also done a video and the video plus the video of the moonlight right before I sold it. Um, the moonlight, I really love, but something about the ginkgo was just right for me, the right timing. And uh, for me, it signifies something special and just happiness and potential. And, and the potential for beauty and joy, you know, like with the autumn and the changing of the leaves, it's just the potential for beauty in a different way. So I'm just trying to be more positive in my life in general. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please chime in below. Let me know what you think. Um, does ginkgo mean anything to you? Or is there a pen or a pattern that means something to you? I'd love to hear your stories. So I hope you all have a lovely weekend. I am signing out as Gourmet Pens. It's me. It's me. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next time. There we go.